Matt Schaff, Jared Small of DraftSharks.com here to answer the question, what is Dynasty Fantasy Football? Jared, it's Thanksgiving. Uh, I guess the family has finished talking about things that everybody actually cares about. So your dad says, Jared, what is Dynasty Fantasy Football? What are you going to tell him? First, I tell him to stop hogging all the stuffing, pass some of that my <laughs> way. But then I, I tell him that Dynasty Fantasy Football, it's the closest thing you can get to actually being the general manager of a football team Mm -hmm. it's the most immersive fantasy football experience it's the most involved fantasy football experience so you know we've talked about redraft and you can learn about that in our you know what is fantasy football video where you know redraft you're picking a new team every season there's no carryover from last year to this year it's not the case in dynasty in dynasty you're pretty much keeping your entire roster from season to season so you are much more worried about a player's lifetime value than Mm -hmm. you are just what he's going to give you this coming season um there are trades throughout the entire year whereas you know redraft you're only trading during the season in dynasty you're literally trading you know, throughout the entire calendar year um you're you're doing a rookie draft every year you know you're not you're not picking players every year you're only picking the incoming rookies just like you see in the real NFL so it is um definitely a super fun way to play fantasy football if you're ready to you know, make the time commitment now if I'm your dad I'm like slow down Jared I thought we were talking about a show from the 80s when you said dynasty but don't worry dad we're going to get into all those aspects that Jared just referenced it's really not as complicated unless you want it to be so like you said at its base it's fantasy football this, this, this all starts with putting together a lineup of players to try to beat somebody else in whatever format the dynasty aspect as you said is about playing it year to year. So you're managing a franchise rather than picking a new team every year. You're, you know, keeping almost your entire roster, often your entire roster year to year and making decisions throughout the off season. So it, it takes the fun of fantasy and really just it expands it throughout the year. So you're not, even when you're out of it in the regular season, you still have next year to think about. Um, and then in January, well, maybe in January, <laughs> your wife's like, all right, can we pay attention to something besides football for a little bit? But February, once it gets to February, <laughs> you're like, all right, now it's time to trade. Now it's time to look at the, the rookie draft. So it just, it spreads the fantasy fantasy fun throughout the year. How does dynasty work? Well, if you're starting up a new dynasty league, you do just that. You have a startup draft, Jared, which means probably exactly what it sounds like. You're just building your initial team. Yeah, this really does resemble a traditional redraft fantasy draft where you're, you know, taking turns, picking players. You're usually going to have do a snake draft, as we talked about redraft, where it's going to go, you know, one through 12, and then you're going to flip the order in the second round, 12 through one. And, you know, this is how you're building your initial dynasty roster through this snake draft. Now, you can also do an auction for dynasty, which is, you know, again, where you're going to get a set amount of money to bid on players. Mm-hmm. So you have a chance to uh, buy any players you want. So there's a couple different ways to disperse guys. But I think the key to remember in your dynasty startup draft is, again, you're drafting these guys for their entire careers. It's not to say you can't trade them down the line, but you know, mm-hmm. you're not just worried about what they're going to do this coming season. You're worried about their entire lifetime value. Right. So suddenly you don't just care about how the guy's going to do the coming season. You also care about how old he is, how well he's likely to do for the next few seasons. Doesn't mean you have to keep the guy forever, of course. And you're going to find people that are trading draft picks right away. They're like, okay, startup draft. Before it gets started, I'm going to give you this pick and this pick for this pick and this pick and this pick. You know, people get crazy about it. But, you know, that's part of it. It just allows yeah. all of that. So yeah. uh, it is fun um if hearing auction tickles your interest at all make sure to look into more auction content in the draft sharks university section on draftsharks.com because fantasy football auctions are, are very fun so if it sounds like a fun thing to you um you know be sure to check it out uh like you said jared we're we're picking players that we're going to keep you know year over year we'll see exactly how long it happens um just like in regular fantasy, though, we're picking a regular roster. We're we're putting together quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, tight ends. We're usually filling the same kind of lineup that we would in a redraft league, right? For sure, yeah. Same positions. I would say when we talked about IDPs, individual defensive players in the What is Fantasy Football video, those are, I think, tend to be more common in mm-hmm. dynasty leagues, right? People that are into this. It's not advanced, common enough. Not common enough, but more common. Um, I do think it makes sense if you're into fantasy enough to play dynasty you should probably be doing it with the defensive players i think the one difference between dynasty and redraft when it comes to rosters is dynasty rosters just tend to be deeper Mm -hmm. in redraft you're usually talking 16 maximum 20 guys on your roster 20 is almost the minimum for dynasty you'll see 30 man rosters 40 man rosters dynasty leagues are more likely to have ir spots where Mm -hmm. if someone is out for the season again 
in redraft and throughout for the season, dump him. You don't you have no need for him anymore. In Dynasty, mm-hmm. if it's especially if it's a younger player, you want to keep him for future seasons. So you will have IR spots where you can just stash those guys. They don't count against your roster limit. Dynasty leagues also tend to have taxi squads. Um, you'll, you'll hear that term. Those are players that don't That's count. a group of guys who, if you need a ride to the airport, you can yes. call them up, right? That, that or it's a group of players that don't count towards your your you know roster that limit. Makes more sense. <laughs> they can't be placed in your starting lineup, right? They're kind of, they're just like stashed away. So they, this mm-hmm. is where you want to stash like your rookies that you know maybe aren't going to do anything this season, but you're hoping down the line they do. Um, you know, so that's why. Um, your dynasty leagues are going to give you taxi squads to give you that ability to stash those future assets. And of course, there's lots of room to play with the size of these rosters, whether you have a taxi squad, whether you have injured reserve slots. Um, it's going to vary by league in terms of what you want. If, you're, if you've got a group that wants to get into dynasty, but they don't want to go all the way in to the point where you're looking at the waiver wire and you're like, right. I don't know any of these players or, you know, if any buddy in your league, maybe that's not you, but maybe it's a couple of people that you want to be in your league. Maybe you ease them in with smaller rosters and you can always expand that over time because certainly the deeper the roster goes, obviously the further into the player pool you got to go yep. um, to to find players to fill everything out. Um, starting lineup. Also, just like the roster, very similar to redraft formats. You're most often using one quarterback, two running backs, two to three wide receivers, a tight end, and then one to three flex spots. You touched on kickers and defenses. There certainly are kickers and defenses in some dynasty leagues. I think it makes less sense in dynasty than it does in redraft just because like you don't have you have Justin Tucker and then you have everybody else at kicker. Like yeah. you just don't have guys that do this forever. You don't have defenses that are good forever. So it's it's kind of a wasted roster spot. I certainly recommend playing with individual defensive players, mm-hmm. but you know, even if you don't do that, you can feel free to leave out kickers or defenses or both. But back to what we do have in this lineup, quarterback, two running backs, two to three wide receivers, tight end, one to three flex spots. And that flex spot is a good spot to, um, you know, play with the variation, play with the depth of your starting lineups. For sure. And I would say in Dynasty, I think you're going to see super flex and two quarterback leagues be more common in this form. And again, super flex is a league that allows you to play a quarterback in the flex spot. So you don't have to start two quarterbacks, but you can start two quarterbacks and you generally want to be starting two quarterbacks in mm-hmm. super flex leagues. And of course, two quarterback leagues mean you you need to start two quarterbacks. So if you're playing Dynasty, um, there's a better chance you're going to find yourself in you know one of those types of leagues. Yeah, and we've seen super flex especially boom in popularity over the past few years. So that's yep. a very common Dynasty form format at this point. And it's good because it adds value to quarterbacks without requiring everybody in the league to necessarily start two quarterbacks every week. Like you said, you want to, but sometimes you can't. Sometimes there are guys that are hurt and you don't want to just put a backup quarterback in just because you have to play a quarterback. Flex spots are normally running back, wide receiver, tight end if it's not super flex. Um, Like I said, you can play with how many of those flex spots you have. Most often it's just one flex spot. You can do two, you can do three. The more you add, the more challenge it is to, you know, fill that starting lineup yep. every week. So, you know, it's just a, an aspect that can be fun and can add a challenge. For sure. Yeah. And I think um, if you do have deeper rosters in Dynasty, it probably makes sense to start a few more guys, right? Kind of use that depth that you're that you're stashing on your bench. I'm all for adding depth without adding crazy depth. And I love doing it. I would much rather do like three flex spots than adding one extra running back because yep. then you're requiring everybody to play that third running back. You're going to have pretty wide variation in who has enough running backs to to fill that spot every week. But if you have two to three flex positions, you know, that opens up the whole pool. It lets every team play somebody that they like better than forcing uh, right. somebody into, say, that third running back role. If you do play with IDPs, lots of room to vary the starting lineup there. We won't get too far into that here just because it's, like I said, it's still not common enough, but it is fairly common. So you, you generally want to have at least multiple starters from each of the position groups, the position groups being defensive line, linebacker, defensive back. So if you have anything short of six starters, you're probably underplaying it. And then, you know, from there, there's there's plenty of flexibility. Just keep if you if you have this mindset that we don't want to have as many defensive players as offense, just remind yourself that everybody on a defense is in play for fantasy on offense. You, there are five players in every play, the offensive line, that are not accumulating any points. So there are more players mm-hmm. in that pool on defense than there are on offense. Yeah, if you're going to do IDP, do IDP. You know, yes. don't, don't skimp on it. Um, so the dynasty season, this, this again, it, play, it 
plays out like most redraft leagues do, right? Where you're generally going to have head-to-head matchups where you're setting your starting lineup, you're facing another team in your league, team that scores the most points that week gets the win, the other one gets the loss. You're going to, you know, at the end of week 13 or 14 or whatever, you're going to decide on, you know, four, six, or eight teams generally make the playoffs. And, you know, just like the NFL season works, you're going to, you know, get to week 17 typically and, and have your Super Bowl. Um, there are dynasty leagues that also use total points, though, if you're more interested in that, where you're not facing anyone each week. You're just accumulating total total points and most total points at the end of the season wins. If you're just looking for a format that's fair above all else, though, you're probably in the wrong place <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> playing fantasy football. Yep. Uh, people want to show they're better than, than somebody else as often as possible. But yes, there is that aspect if you do want to chase fairness. It's certainly fairer to go total points yep. than head to head. Um, and, you know, the big difference here between Dynasty and Redraft is that you stay engaged throughout the year, even if you have no shot at the playoffs. You're still building something for next year or deciding right. whether you need to rebuild. So you can be trading with a contender. You can try targeting their rookie draft picks. You can try to see if there is a young guy or two on their roster. That's not really serving a purpose for them, but that can be a lot more valuable for you. So it, it's it's a way to not only stay engaged throughout the calendar year, but it's, it keeps you more engaged throughout the NFL season. In a, in a typical redraft league, you're absolutely going to have two to three people at least who by, you know, late November, December, just not paying attention. Even for agency waiver wire, you're going to stay active there, right? Because even if you're out of it for this season, that, you know, running back you pick up in in week 15 might be a contributor for you down the line. So it definitely keeps owners engaged all season long. Final point I think about the regular season to mention with Dynasty is your, just like in the NFL, your finish in the standings determines where you're picking in next year's Mm -hmm. draft. So, the winner of the league will have the last pick in the draft the following year. Whoever you know was the worst team in the league is going to have the first pick. Mm-hmm. Unless you guys have like an arm wrestling tournament to determine that. But you're you're an outlier <laughs> of a league if that's the case. <laughs> um, so you mentioned we're most commonly playing head to head. There are total points where the highest score wins. There are more and more best ball options here too. And best ball, just in case you're not familiar with that term, is where you still draft your team. In Dynasty, you're still managing it throughout the year where you have waiver runs, you can make trades, but the best ball aspect is the system choosing your optimal lineup of players every week. And that means after the games are played, after the fantasy points have been scored, the system will automatically choose your top scoring quarterback, your two best running backs, your three best wide receivers, you know, exactly what fits your lineup, but it chooses that lineup for you. I like it for two reasons, Jared, because one, it takes away a little bit of management time Uh, inside of NFL season. I'm limited on time, but it also takes away a bit of the luck factor. And I mean, there's certainly a skill to setting your lineups. I'm not saying that there's no skill to that, but there will always be luck involved in the games. Who happens to score a touchdown? Who got injured? Who just had a bad game that was unpredictable? They were in a great spot and it just didn't go their way. So there's always some luck at play. So I think best ball takes away a bit of that luck in a sport where there's always going to be lots of luck involved. Definitely reduces luck. I do think it makes Sundays a bit less fun if you're playing the basketball format just because you don't know, you know, this guy's definitely in my starting lineup. I need him to perform. Yeah, but you still know who you want to perform. So you know this group and... It, so what it takes away of not being able to track the specific player, you are also not watching a guy having a blow up week and thinking, crap, why didn't I start him? Mm-hmm. You're like, sweet. He's mm-hmm. going to be playing over Patrick Mahomes this week, I guess. Sure. Yep. The size of your league affects quite a bit about how your league runs and how deep you have to go for players. And there are wide variations here. You can find dynasty leagues as small as 10. I'm not sure I've ever seen a dynasty league smaller than 10 teams. Most commonly, they've been 12. I think it's even more common in Dynasty than in Redraft for there to be 14, 16 team leagues. Our colleague Alex even asks us questions at times about Mm -hmm. a Dynasty league of 32 teams. To me, that sounds like a bit more of a headache than fun. But if you like that level of dedication, that's available. In a lot of those leagues that are, you know, 32 teams, you'll you'll find dynasty leagues that have multiple copies of players is what they call it. So that's literally what it sounds like. You'll mm-hmm. have two Patrick Mahomes. So you could, <laughs> you know, the same team is going to have, the, you could be playing against another team that has Patrick Mahomes. So that's something you could find. Again, there's, um, you, you can definitely get into the weeds with dynasty. There's, there's a lot, mm-hmm. a lot going on here. That's a bit of a cheat there because his dad's name is also Patrick Mahomes. So there are literally two of them. But yeah, like I said, there's there's wide variations and how many teams are in your league will significantly impact um, exactly how things go for you. Rookie draft. Jared, you mentioned that the order is commonly set by the finish the year before. Yep. 
the rookie draft itself, once you get to it, is probably just what you think it is by hearing that. You guys are doing a draft just like any other, but you're picking rookies. I think one big difference here is that it's usually linear style instead of a snake. So if you are picking first, you're normally picking first in each round. Right, of course, that's how the NFL does it, right? Mm -hmm. Um, The Chiefs won it all last year. They weren't picking uh, first in round two. They were Mm -hmm. picking at the end of every round. So again, we're trying to make this as realistic as possible. Um, I think, again, as you said, in a redraft, you're drafting the entire player pool. That's not the case in Dynasty. This is generally just the rookies. Sometimes you will find leagues that veterans that you know were on the waiver wire at the mm-hmm. end of the season are in the rookie draft pool, but generally it's just rookies. Rookie drafts, at least three rounds. I think five is probably most common. You'll find some leagues that will do you know seven round rookie drafts. Again, it all depends how um, deep you want your league to be. And mm-hmm. then, of course, these rookie picks are super valuable trading currency throughout the year, and you can mm-hmm. you can trade them throughout the year. You can even trade rookie picks in a lot of leagues two years down the road. You know, I could be trading you my you know twenty twenty five second round pick at this point. So that's another way that you know dynasty leagues get a lot more involved. I hope you're not planning to get much from me for your twenty twenty five second rounder because you're barking up we'll the wrong see. tree with that one, buddy. But yeah, important currency and how people value them is going to differ quite a bit. Yep. So it makes trading that much more interesting. I tend to be more on the selling pick side because I would rather go for somebody that's a, a more of a known quantity than the unknown. Obviously, it doesn't always work out. You could trade that pick and have it turn into somebody amazing. Um, but I, I like chasing what I know a little bit more. Speaking of currency, <laughs> if you are in a league that is for money, and you know that part's obviously totally up to you. You can have a buy-in or not. If you are, collect that money up front because chasing down owners at the end of the season to have them pay their league fees and give money to the winner of the league is a, a nightmare. Yeah. Well, I think in dynasty too, generally you want to be collecting money for the year out in advance just to keep people committed. You have more responsible right? friends than I do, I guess. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, that's, <laughs> that's, that's another story, but, um, because you can find owners that will totally sell out, right? They'll trade all their picks. They'll trade all their young players for like guys that are going to pr- produce this year. Mm-hmm. They'll win the league and then they'll just bolt. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you make someone pay for, you know, both this season and the coming season, that at least kind of, you know, makes them more committed to, you know, treating this as a dynasty league that it is. Yeah. At the very least, it's something worth keeping in mind as you're planning out every aspect of this dynasty league. Yep. If you are starting one new, or even if you have one that's existing and you're just trying to figure out how best to run it going forward. Speaking of how best to run it, we do have some favorite places to play Dynasty. We've played them across formats at this point, and and these are some of the sites that have worked out the best. Sleeper is a great one for playing Dynasty. It's free to play on, so you don't have to, you know, make part of the league fees paying for that league on there. There's excellent support for the Dynasty format on Sleeper. They're constantly working on it. They are responsive if you have issues, um, so that's good. There is flexibility to the settings. You know, dynasty leagues are going to have even more variation than redraft. So you yep. want to have the ability to change things. And if you do like managing stuff from your phone, they have a good app for managing your fantasy yeah. football teams. I think the app is the biggest selling point for Sleeper. Um, if you are a phone guy, you want to be on the go doing your dynasty stuff. I think or Sleeper a phone girl. or a phone girl, of course. Um, I think Sleeper is, is the, the place for you. If you're more of a computer guy, I think Fantrax is a site worth looking at for your dynasty league. Super flexible. Um, it's also free, very clean web site experience. So I, I think that's kind of the key difference there. I think Sleeper and Fantrax are both excellent for dynasty. Well, one other great thing that Fantrax does is you can actually import existing leagues. So maybe mm-hmm. you have a league that you're playing already and you're like, I hate having this on NFL.com. Uh, you can import it to Fantrax and they have your settings right in there. And if you have any issues along the way, they're ready to help you iron out those issues. Jared, we've talked about playing for money. I think if you really want to play for serious money and, you know, you can play a lifetime of fantasy and not play for quote unquote serious money. That's totally fine. But if you do want to play for serious money, FFPC, a great place to do that. They have lots of different dynasty league options. They have best ball. They have super flex. They have various numbers of flexes and they have a wide range of entry fees, as low as $100, as high as $5,000. I hope that at some point I'm at the level (laughs) where I can pay $5,000 for a league. I'm not sure if I will at that point if I have that much money, but I would love to be at the point where I'm like, what should I do with this 5K? I think I'll toss it into a brand new (laughs) Dynasty League. Whatever level you are at, you can find all of those available. And 
You can either have a group of people that joins a league together on yeah. FFPC, or you can just go join one. You can just find one on their website and say, I feel like adding a dynasty league this year. I don't have 11 people yeah. that I can play with. I I'm in for this one. FFPC has never had a dynasty league fold either. So you don't have to worry about that, even though you're, you're probably not going to know these guys you're playing against. Um, yeah, great customer support at FFPC, super clean, easy to use website. So that's definitely the place I go and I'm you know looking to get into a public dynasty league. Yeah, even if I'm not throwing around $5,000 Frisbees yet, I did last <laughs> year, you know, win and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to jump into something else here. Brought up FFPC, found a new Superflex League, jumped into that one, won some money there as well. So if you want to learn more about the Dynasty format and strategies for dominating that format, you can find lots more right now in the DraftSharks University section on DraftSharks.com.